Hi guys, I'm Nicholas Bauer and welcome back to Thai TV. Today we are going to tie a floating shrimp. This shrimp is uh, based on the famous Patigris and Fly um, that uh, Klaus created down in Denmark. But I've simplified it a little bit, so it's going to be very simple for you guys to tie. And I also put a foam back to it and uh, it helps it have a very, very good buoyance in cold water. And also when you stop it, it doesn't sink down. It just keeps that position in a very, very good place. And um, it's a very, very good fly. So you can tie them in ma many different colors. These are some of the colors I like to fish. Uh, this olive one is, is really a nice color. I just added some uh, fluorescent colors to it. Uh, fluorescent eyes and some a trigger point in orange there. And of course you can use like a, a bright chartreuse tail. It's all up to you. Uh, but it's a simple, uh, fast tying pattern and the most crucial thing when I, when I think when you fish flies like this, they shouldn't tangle. So simple, great fly as just a normal fly or very good pattern as a dropper fly because it doesn't pull that leader down. So you get that leader very straight angle to the last fly. So all over, simple, good pattern. So let's start. So we're get basically going to run it on uh, on a streamer hook, a straight hook. This is the Attitude Streamer, size two. If you want a little bit shorter shank to it, you can use the Attitude Extra. Uh, like these guys are tied on a shorter shank. Uh, the, the thing is you're not gonna have the same amount of foam, so it's not gonna have the same buoyancy. Depends on how you wanna weight the fly. But we're gonna tie them on the uh, Attitude Streamer. Slightly longer hook, a little bit more foam, and uh, it's going to make them just hoover in the water like that. So we're gonna run the tech stream, the 50 denier. It's a very strong thread. And basically this together with the nylon thread, that's basically all I need for my sea trout flies. So we're just gonna add some glue to the hook here because these threads are unwaxed and they don't have any stretch. So if you glue that thread to the hook, you're gonna get a very, very strong and secure base. So that's done. And now to help this tail here from not tangling, because I don't want to fly with the tail coming in like this every 10 casts. I want to fly that probably never going to come in like that. So we're going to make a good support here of bucktail. And we're also going to add a few strands of ripple eyes. We're going to start out with some bucktail. This is just, you can use any tan or light pink or whatever color you have at home. You can actually use some of these if you have a white one, you can use some of the little brown color on the top here. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to use a few strands that's going to give that good support. This is a light pink one. And uh, as you can see, we're not going to use a lot of strands. We're going to take some of these fibers off. It's just for that support. And try to use as soft bucktail as possible. So we get, that's kind of the tail I want. So we're talking about 10, maybe 15 strands or 15 fibers maximum. We're going to tie them on in on the top here and uh, they should be sticking out around three, three centimeters like that. So tie them in, make a few good tight pulls. So we have that nice and straight. We don't want that be pointing down, downwards. It should be nice and straight. And I don't think we should go with the thread further back than the barb. So we can go a few wraps forward, cut that existing material off, like that. And then we go back with the thread again. Now we're going to put some um, ripple ice fiber here. This is a really cool fiber. It's super fluorescent, as you can see. And it's, this almost looks like a flash, so it's really, it's not a straight flash. It's very, very crinkled. Um, the downside of it is it's very, very weak. But if you throw a few in there, they usually work pretty well. So we're just going to use three or four fibers. I'm going to run four here. As you can see, this fiber is really, really kind of giving blows in different directions. Make sure that they are a little bit tapered, but don't pull too hard because then you're going to pull them off. Tie them in. So you tie them around probably 60% backwards to the tail and 40% in your hand and just tie them on the top of it. Spread them out a little bit and fold those 40% over like that. 
So now we have those ripple eyes there, and as you can see, they're gonna glow really cool. You can also see if you haven't got them straight. <laughs> it's too visible with a UV light here. So that's basically the tail, and uh, now we're just gonna run one spay hackle, and this is a whiting spay hackle, dyed salmon. This can come in various color. This is also a really nice color. This is a grizzly dyed uh, salmon. The thing with these fibers are that they're very light in the water. So even when the fly is standing still, they're very thin, but they just stand there moving almost like marabou, but they're much, much lighter. And they're much, not stiffer, but they are holding the position in the water much better. So it's a really cool fiber. And uh, we're gonna take one of these hackles, uh, quite large one, because we're gonna run it for the tail. So try to find a nice one here. This is a well used one, so just gonna pull out two here. Get them out. So I actually got two here. As you can see, the fibers, how they look. These feathers are a little bit hard to work with the first time you use them because the fibers are long and it's very, very thin hackle base. But as soon as you have tied a few of these, it's gonna be very, very simple. As you can see now, the feather has some softer fibers down here that are very, very similar to marabou. I want to use these, but the hackle stem is too thick here, so you can't really wrap it. So we're going to pull those off like that. Position them on the table where you know where you have them. I usually put them in two bunches like that on the table. So now we basically have the feather like that. The hackle stem down here is too heavy to wrap, so we're going to basically wrap down to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the tip, try to get those fibers straight out here so it becomes more simple to hackle the feather with so nice and gently like that and then now you can see these tips from the feather here is actually pointing towards the left here and this is how we're going to tie in the feather so you're going to tie it into a 90 degree angle on the tip here and then we're going to wrap it forward so you go with the thread all the way back tie that feather in Tie it forward, cut that off, and then we're going to wrap this, or we're going to hackle this fiber forward, trying to get these fibers here folding backwards the whole time. So you need to use both of your hands at the same time. And this is going to be actually hackled quite a long way on the hook, but we're going to wrap back with the thread here just to make that fly really durable and also a non-tangling fly. So we're just gonna wrap this forward here. This is definitely the place where you can press fast forward. Uh, you can actually, if you want to, you can throw this feather into a, a dubbing loop. But the negative thing with that is that you get all those small, short fibers sticking up. And that's something I don't want. It builds a little bit of volume, but it also creates those uh, small points sticking up. So that's something I don't want to have in the fly. So we just tie that off. And then we can cut that off. So as you can see now, the feather is wrapped basically like six, seven millimeters forward. Um, but I want to wrap this back now so we get most of this fibers to the tail. So what I want to do is I want to kind of hold these fibers up a little bit and then gently with the thread here kind of overwrap the whole hackle here and then you can go you can see a little bit how far you want to go back because if you go too, f too far back you're actually just going to pull all the feathers tight like that and you don't want that so I'm just going to back this up a little bit and then now you can see where you have that good volume, but you also created a very, very strong and durable fly here. So now we got the volume and we have everything covered. We can actually go back and forward with the thread here. And that's gonna be super strong. As you can see, you can have that glow in the center. And now what we're gonna do with this marabou-like spay hackle here, is that we're gonna take some of these very, very soft here. We're gonna actually pull those longer fibers away. That was actually a very long one. 
Let's cut that down a little bit. I just want a little bit short piece like that. And we're gonna tie that in on the belly. So we're just gonna create that nice little softer material on the belly. Covering that hook bend really nice. And then we're gonna take this other bunch. This one we're going to save and we're gonna have it attached when we have attached the eyes. So we're just gonna save that. So that's basically the tail. So now we're gonna attach some eyes to this. What is a shrimp without eyes? And these are the, the really cool eyes from um, Easy Shrimp. And um, these eyes are actually attached to a small piece of plastic. And they're super simple to uh, tie in. They're also very fluorescent, as you can see, and makes a really, really good trigger point to the fly. If you have a fly like this one that is very gray, and just by adding those two, oh, actually I put a lot of fluorescent material in this, so it wasn't a good. <laughs> I'll show an older one instead. As you can see here, the eyes are really standing out and makes a really, really good trigger point for the fish. But we are actually going to improve these eyes a little bit. Well, not improve, but, but we're gonna make them slightly hotter. So we're gonna use a UV resin. This is the new uh, UV resin from Vision. So this is black. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a small dot here, like an eye on both, uh, both an eye on the eyes, looking like that. So we got these two perfect black dots. We're just gonna cure that resin. Then you actually have those really, really cool black dots. That's just gonna give that fly a little bit extra. So we're gonna tie this. We're gonna tie this in here on the top. So the eyes are facing backwards. So as you can see, this has a plastic um, straight piece here. It's actually a little bit waffled too, so it's very simple to tie. The thread grabs it, grabs it really well, so it's really simple to tie in. We're not going to use the whole base here, but we can just cut it off. But we're going to tie this in. I don't really want to have the thread all the way back when I tie this in, because it actually kind of compressed the eyes. So have it a little bit, fat, little bit forward. We tie that in. Make some good, strong thread wraps here. We're just going to use a little bit of force here, so this is nice and secure. And we, don't, we want these eyes to be facing backwards. You can pull them so they're slightly facing up. Makes a much cooler shrimp. And then we're going to go back a little bit to where uh, these eyes are just got starting to go together. Now we can see you have this old piece of plastic sticking up here. We just cut off because we're not going to need that. And then just put a drop of glue here, so we have a nice and strong shrimp. So we wrap this over here a little bit. And now to kind of hide these eyes here, we're just going to use this leftover soft fibers from the bottom of that feather. And we're just going to basically spread that all of the on the top of the fly here. So it makes that nice, soft material covering all those places that you couldn't really cover. Actually, I'm going to steal some marabou from this one too. I just love that when they're a little bit soft on the top there, they just fish so well. It's almost like a marabou fly, but with a much lighter material. So. As you can see, we have the eyes there, uh, we have the tail, and everything is really fluorescent. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tie in a piece of foam that we're going to use as the back. So we're going to go all the way back to the, to the soft fibers here. And we're going to use some peach colored foam. This is a package that contain, contains 3 millimeter and 1.5 millimeter. We're going to run the thinner one. The thicker one becomes really, really bulky and actually creates the fly to float, and that's not really what we want. So we're going to take that little bit longer scissor, and we're going to cut a piece here, around 2 centimeters, 2.5 centimeters. We're not going to use that full length, 
but you need a little bit to work with. And we're going to just shape this a little bit as an old boat. So we're just going to, you know, this old wooden boat with an um, engine sitting in the middle. Call it a sneepa in Swedish, so something like that. It's not perfect, but uh, it's a little bit important that you have this little bit tapered end here because it's much more simple to tie in there. So we're going to tie it in, having the material facing backwards. I'm just going to tie that in on the side there. This is something we're going to fold over. So you really want that, you don't want to have any thread wraps visible if you lean this forward here. So that's good, happy with that. And then we're going to use some Polo Chanel, also in a very bright color. This is shell pink. We're just going to use, of course you can use this, you can take the whole bunch in your hand, but it's going to be a little bit more simple to show you. So I cut off a piece like that. This is actually uh, some short plastic fibers that are, when, when they're in the water, they're moving really cool. And uh, of course they're very fluorescent, but it's just a super simple uh, material to work with. And uh, I like it. So we're going to tie that in here. So we can um, kind of wrap that over the dubbing that we're going to create now. So now it's time for the dubbing. And um, basically the whole fly is, is almost done here. We're just going to fold this over. But actually, we're not gonna just going to take one bag of, of dubbing like this and, and put it on. We're going to make our own dubbing. And that can be really time consuming if you're going to mix it in water and stuff like that. So uh, what I use, I use a coffee grinder. So this is basically a, a normal coffee grinder. It has two blades here going spinning around. And that's what we want to create. It's going to create a lot of air and it's going to create that dubbing to mix really, really well. So it actually just spins two blades like that. Very simple. A lot of people are going to ask what brand it is. So this is a brown. Probably multiple different brands who sells this. <laughs> Not sponsored, guys. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, we're going to... Uh, so this is my box where I've already mixed a lot of these dubbings. This is something we're going to create now. This is made out of seal and gold, uh, SLF prism, a whole bunch of different materials. So that's what we're going to create. But we're going to start out with seal's fur. This is orange. So we're going to throw some of that in there. So when you buy them, it's just normal seal's fur. This is the SLF salt water. This is fluorescent orange. Had to read on the back there. Uh, this is kind of a basically a synthetic dubbing. So we're just going to pull those fibers off a little bit so it becomes a little bit more untangled. Throw that in. This is SLF Prism in gold. Gold is really good for sea trout. They like jewelry. Gonna throw some of that gold in. Like that. And then we're gonna use some Fusion Dub. This is called Eat a, Eat a Peach. So it's very, very fluorescent. Just gonna use that. It's also a synthetic dubbing. So we're just gonna push those up a little bit. And then we're just gonna, as you can see now, it's a big mess like that. And to be able to work this together and make it look nice, you're going to stand like this forever. So, you just push it in a coffee grinder. And you have a perfect mixture like that. As you can see, put a lot of fluorescent stuff in this. But actually, I want a little bit more gold to it, so I just put it back. I'm just going to add a little bit more gold. Not that much gold. Just a little bit more gold. And this way you can just play around with whatever material it is, whatever material you feel like you're working with. And also, you can just go crazy. The only thing, if you're using too long fibers, it has a tendency to ta tangle. But if you want to run stuff like this in there, just cut it down. It's super simple. So now I think I'm happy here. We have um, a really nice dubbing, uh, like gold sparkle, a lot of volume. So it's not going to be just flat on the fly. And as you can see, also very fluorescent. So I'm happy with that. Don't forget to rinse it off before you're going to use your beans afterwards. So back to the fly here. 
we're going to go with the thread all the way back and then we're going to attach some dubbing to this to the thread here a lot of people when they're putting dubbing on to the thread they have a tendency to kind of work very close to the fly here don't do that i mean you can you can work with your dubbing a long way down here and as soon as you're happy with that in a nice comfort zone here towards you and then you just shoot your dubbing straight up to the fly like that so it's much more simple to work with and then you can create a longer place where you can put your dubbing so we're just going to wrap this here nice and tight just going to try to taper this a little bit forward we're going to pick a lot of these fibers out so we can create that good volume to the body so we can go basically over and over with this but you want to have a, a body where you have a lot of material and should be a little bit soft so you really have the place to pick out all the fibers like this so you can create that soft body that's going to create a lot of movement in the water but also it's going to help the fly keeping the balance and the buoyancy in the water. So now we got all those fibers sticking out. I like to pull them straight towards you and straight towards me because I'm going to go with the polar chenille through this as a ribbing and it's much more simple than to pick out the fibers when we've done that. So I'm going to go with this. We're going to wrap it as a ribbing like four times or five times around this. We're going to keep a gap of around one to one and a half millimeters between the wraps here so we can pick that dubbing out again so all the way forward make one last wrap in the front here and tie that off and then we take all these fibers kind of force them to the back so now we can see we have this segments we have a lot of dubbing picked out and now we're just going to kind of finalize the fly so we're just going to fold this over here pushing the material backwards and tie this down here and we're just going to tie it in and we're just going to we finish this here then we're actually going to be done with this fly um, there's two ways you can kind of keep this fly now you can, if you want to, you can pull that, uh, you can cut that foam really tight straight to the hook eye that you're just going to use as a floating device or you can actually pull it and you can save a small piece like that and you're actually going to have a fly that's going to go, go like a skater it's not, in the, not on top of the surface but a little bit in the water like that so it's all up to you um, if you want to pull it really tight my recommendation is that you pull the foam like this and you cut it with your scissor as tight as possible then the foam is going to retract and make a nice head but I thought I'll leave this like a walker so we're just gonna have that small piece like that and then we're just gonna lift those eyes up a little bit so here guys here we have the uh, floating or actually a hoovering shrimp as you can see very fluorescent ultra bright and very simple fly to tie, and it doesn't tangle at all. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'd love to hear from you where you fish your shrimp flies, what species you catch on them. I mostly fish these for sea trout, but also for perch. So please leave a comment. I would like to hear what you think. And uh, if you do so, you actually have the chance to win this fly. So guys, if you like fly tying, feel free to follow Fly Dressing on Instagram, and you will have the latest in fly tying right there. If I were a sea trout, I would eat this. Look at this guy. Looks really bad. Och det där kommer ju definitivt för mig alltihopa.